Hi, Alex Williams with the new stack here at South by Southwest, live from the Capital One House, where we'll be spending the next few days talking to people about the developer efforts that Capital One has had underway, including the opening of their APIs and their developer platform. We look forward to bringing you the stories here and see you again soon. Hey, Alex Williams of the New Stack here with Joe Jackson, Managing Editor of the New Stack. And today we're here at the Capital One House where we're going to learn more about Swift ID, the two factor authentication technology that Capital One has introduced here at South by Southwest. So perhaps one of you guys could tell us uh, you know, a little bit about Swift ID, but even before that, why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Margaret Mayer. Um, I lead our consumer identity and messaging technology platforms for Capital One. And hi, I'm Keith Hamburg. I'm on the uh, product management side of our consumer identity team. Uh, Jamie Ashfield, product manager for authentication. Great. So, Keith, maybe you can help us understand a little bit about uh, Swift ID and tell us a little bit about the process that 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 uh, you went through to bring it out you know, externally because you did develop it as an internal API. Yeah, well, um, with a lot of things, I mean, we uh, obviously as a bank, uh, strong identity capabilities and, and in particular authentication, very important, right? Uh, we're protecting people's money, uh, information about them. We have to have strong identity. And what we were seeing a lot of times in the industry is people were trying to add additional security by adding more friction, by making passwords more complicated or making steps more uh, complicated for consumers. So we really wanted to find a way that balanced simplicity with security. And leveraging the unique capabilities of the mobile device, uh, we've built Swift ID, which actually allows for the delivery of true two-factor authentication, meaning something you know combined with something you have, in the case a mobile device that's trusted and everything, and allow that to be the mechanism for proving you are who you say you are from anything from, hey, I'm logging into a website, or uh, I'm trying to transfer a large amount of money. Now, that applies great for Capital One and the nature of the business that we're in, but what we recognize is that same authentication capability could apply for any kind of consumer engagement, whether that's, hey, I want to open a refrigerator or I want to uh, approve access to uh, vi videos or images online. Having that same kind of seamless authentication capability is something that we think that third-party developers can take and leverage to add value to their users. All right, so how does the uh, independent or, or, or small business app developer uh, 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 use the uh, Swift ID? You wanna sure, yeah, I'd be happy to answer that. So um, the way that they use it is they go to developer.capital1.com, our dev exchange, and uh, they register first so that they can get their secret and their client key. And then they go about building the app, and we have a ton of overview material as well as a reference app online so that they can, in, in about, you know, five easy key steps, be able to put it all together and start using it. Initially, this is a free service, or is there a, a payment mechanism, or how does that work? Um, it is free, and I'll let Jamie or uh, Keith answer a little bit more about that. Uh, well, yeah, I'll answer. I mean, right now, uh, this is our first foray into open development platform, and uh, our key objective here is to have co-creation, build great things that add value both to our third-party partners and our consumers. Uh, and we'll evaluate as we go along. I imagine that if we get to a point where we decide that monetization is involved, it would be some type of a tiered transaction. But right now, we haven't really focused on that. We're more about trying to discover value in, in the capabilities that we uh, make available. Excellent. Uh, well, something I'm very curious about is uh, how do you authenticate people? When I, as a third-party developer, how do I know uh, that Alex Williams is the Alex Williams? Uh, uh, you know, I know there's not a lot that goes on with Facebook or Twitter authentication. What does Cap? What, what does Cap One do to ensure I am who I say I am? Yeah. Thanks. Well, um, you know. Banks have a core competency of ensuring that they have strong identities, and of course we're also a heavily regulated industry, so we ensure that we're complying with all the regulations around Know Your Customer. That is kind of that foundation, but what we've done with Swift ID is really layered on that strong multi-factor authentication that includes, number one, your mobile device, and when we say your mobile device, what we really mean there is we're able to get a unique, deep signature about that device that makes it unique, like a unique key. Then in addition, we can now layer on other activities such as a touch ID or our uh the other capability we built in-house called SureSwipe, which is a simple pattern login. And we found that that's how customers want to interact. So it's very quick, it's easy, but those, those two layers combined create some of the strongest security really that's ever been launched in the mass consumer market. 
Can you tell us a little bit about the architecture that you developed and about the, you know, in particular perhaps about the APIs and, and how they're, you know, and what constitutes them? Yep, sure. So they are RESTful APIs. We actually have five API endpoints. One of them is around the Swift ID task itself. The other four are related to um, creation and maintenance of webhooks. So we use webhooks to be able to send back to that third-party application um, whether or not the customer approved their um, approve their transaction. So so that is really the, the high level of how we put it together. Uh, and then we're using three-legged OAuth to manage the authorization and the consent from the consumer. So why webhooks? Ah, because we found that it was the best way to be able to do the callback. Um, and we just felt like it was something that was scalable for us. And uh, we just found that it performed really well. What were some of the alternatives you looked at? Oh, we looked at polling, which we just felt like was going to not scale well as this rolls out. Um, and polling just really had a really um, undesirable effect on our systems. Oh, what kind of effect? Just curious. Oh, um, well, there's just a lot of hits, a lot of pings against the system saying, you know, did they approve, did they approve, did they approve repetitively? Um, whereas a webhook is really nice. It's event-based. The customer or the third-party app just waits until we trigger that uh, URL. How have you architected it to prevent man-in-the-middle attacks and uh, Trojan attacks? Ah, okay. So, um, as Jamie described, um, one of the things that we require is that um, you have the Capital One mobile app um, installed on your device. And so, um, the notification is going to that device. And so, we already know because you've opted in to Swift ID already on the mobile device. Um, and so, then we look at that. And then also, as Jamie mentioned, we talk about um, we've interrogated the device already. Already. And so that's how we generally feel safe from those. Yeah, and I think it's important to point out this is not a simple, hey, let's send an SMS uh, to a phone number kind of capability, which is vulnerable to man in the middle or someone uh, taking over a phone number, reporting over the phone number. This is bound to our software on a particular device, and that adds that additional security that some of the common uh, capabilities were man in the middle and other spoofing types of attacks would, would be more successful. This really eliminates that kind of capability. We know exactly the device that we're connecting with and bind that to the user that we're speaking with at the time. Yeah, and just to add on to that, one of the other advantages of Swift ID is we have the ability to truly be out of band. Your traditional out of bands often are a loop that ends up going back into the, potentially the compromised channel, such as your traditional one-time passwords. In this case, it's completely between Capital One and the customer the, and our app and on their phone. They get to see exactly what they're approving um, in a pristine channel. So you don't have that risk of someone getting in between them. Um, they get to see that, yes, they are approving specifically this transaction. When they approve it, it is just between us. And of course, can't talk about the details of security, but we ensure that that channel is, is highly secured. So are you authenticating the transaction itself? How do you mean exactly? Well, um, you, can, uh, you, can, uh, you can authenticate the identity of the individual. Can you authenticate the transaction that the person is engaging in? Yeah, so we offer with the way our API is that really anything that needs to get approved, you can send down the pipe. The customer will receive it. They'll get a chance to, to, to see what they're approving in context. So if it's an internal transaction, let's say you're going to do a transfer, you get an explanation that says, would you like to transfer, th you know, we've got a request to transfer $1,000 to this account. Do you approve? They get to see that, in a, like I said, out of band in a pristine channel, and they can then approve that. And in the case of our third parties, we're going to learn and see what sort of transactions they're looking to have approved. But it will come through that same model where they can send it down that, that clean pipe that we don't have to worry about anyone uh, getting in between. So I'm, I'm not that familiar with the, uh, uh, the laws around e-commerce, but what you're saying, I understand, is this gives the third-party app provider, uh, I guess, a legally uh, solid proof that the individual had approved the transaction. Uh, well, I, you know, I, I don't know if we would speak to the legality of any particular transaction. Well, let's say the uh, something that, that, that can hold up in a court of law, for instance, as being a verifiable form of consent. Well, I, I would say that one of the benefits of our product is it does create an audit trail of the engagement between the application uh, or the third-party developer and the consumer uh, engaging and responding through the device uh, and the nature, the time that happened and everything. So it, it is a wonderful way for somebody who has any kind of question, whether it be a legal question or a customer fulfillment question, that that information is available and they, they are able to use that. 
Excellent, excellent. Now, this seems like a technology that has a very widespread, uh, it could be used very widely, but uh, could you uh, perhaps tell me what are some of the apps that would uh, benefit by using a, a third party, or maybe some low-hanging fruit that would be obvious use cases that would be very interested in the yep. service? Yep, so, um, so we've put up a couple of different applications. So, for example, um, you know, maybe your tax forms or something that a small accountant could send them to you, a picture share was another one. Jamie, you had a couple more that uh, you, you had. Yeah, well really, you know, the sky's the limit. That's what we're so excited about because we realize over and over again that people have this challenge of how do, how do I send something to someone to get their approval and to do it in a way that's truly trusted. Um, and if you think about how often do we have to do that, particularly in, in, in the digital medium, where more and more it's harder and harder to know who you're interacting with, the way the ability to send that through. So that enables a lots of use cases. We're seeing, you know, some simple ones like imagine you're have a small business program and you want to offer a dual approved model. So you're the owner of the small business and your bookkeeper has just completed all of your accounts payable. They click submit. Small business owner happens to be at an important dinner or maybe they're on vacation at the beach. They get a simple approval, they review the transactions to be submitted. If they look appropriate to them, they also approve and then it's submitted. So they go on, um, and the use cases are really as broad as, as the imagination. Yeah, I would uh, I, I would reemphasize that. I mean, that is that is the magic uh, behind the whole open platform strategy. Is that uh, we want to co-create with a large community of developers and have them come up with the ideas where this adds value. Uh, it's really a way to engage the consumer in a frictionless way to approve a transaction or to get strong verification. It's really the person who's uh, approving the transaction. Uh, and we do have some ideas about it, but we're, we're very excited to see all the different uses that uh, the development community comes up with. I just have one last question before we go. I wanted to uh, ask about the, the storage of the data itself. Uh, for the individual um, and of those those actual transactions themselves, how are you guys doing that? Well, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll start, and then we can talk a little bit more. So um, we record first of all your consent. So that's part of the OAuth standard. We record um, that you've granted consent to this third-party application to use Swift ID, and then for security purposes and customer servicing purposes, we do store all the times that a Swift ID was um, sent to you, as well as did you approve or decline that. Um, and we do that so that if you call in because you're concerned, um, that we can go back and we can look at that. So that's how we um, store, we use that data just for simply security and servicing purposes. Um, but I'll point out, like if there was a use case where someone was trying to um, protect access to uh, digital files like pictures, uh, this would certainly not require the developer to store the pictures with us. It's just the transactional data around the Swift ID, uh, you know, uh, transaction and its approval is the data that we'll be storing. Nothing tied to the third-party developer's actual product or the thing that they are uh, trying to provide the security around. Well, there's lots more questions to, to talk to talk with you about the infrastructure and everything else, but I think that's just about all the time we have right now. But thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us here at the Capital One House of South by Southwest. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.